Are you an idealist? I'm a freaking idealist. This is the third time I've made this video because I want it to be perfect. Well, actually, just things kept happening. I'm Alice Iglesia, and in the 11th hexagram, we're exploring and embodying the shadows of obscurity, the gifts of idealism, and a city of light. If you're an idealistic human, leader, speaker, creator, anything, I think you're really going to get a lot out of this practice. Your body by itself is probably going to feel really good. And I think there's some really fun insights for you. The 11th hexagram starts off young, young, young. So we're starting forward and up and wide. And this is called mesh. In Uzazu, we embody through these dimensions and it gives us a very specific access to certain mind-body states. And in mesh, we're essentially in the world. It's the fundamental thing about it. We're in the world, doing our thing, collaborating, however well that's going. The top trigram of the 11th hexagram is yin, yin, yin. So we're gonna go back far away from the world and down into our sensations and narrow purely into our own experience. So this is called sponge. So we're moving from the world in mesh to ourselves in sponge. Try it a couple times. Mesh and sponge. The bottom trigram saying, hey, where are you? And the top trigram saying, where are you going? So with the 11th hexagram, we're starting in the world, active, engaged, collaborative, however well that's going. And we're moving deeply into our own experience. Do these next three times with a lot more sensitivity. Feel what it's like to start in the world where you're looking and taking everything in through your eyes and your awareness and your senses. And you're active at the same time. And then shift back, let that go. Notice more of your own sensations, emotions, and energy. And then restart. Hey, there's a world out there. Right. Engage. And then take that into your experience. One more time, you're in the world. Let it be your platform for living today. And then bring it into a sense of stillness and deep inclusion. We'll be doing mobility that emphasizes these patterns and movements that really emphasize the way that these two, the mesh and the sponge come together. And that way you can get a sense for how you can bring the 11th hexagram into your life through exercise and movement as you train your body, do mobility and make your body feel amazing. But before we do that, what is the fundamental embodied story we're getting just from the hexagram? Seems to be something like, like in what is obscurity and what is idealism? Well, it seems to be if we start in mesh and we move into sponge, think about, are there any places where you're trying to be successful, you're trying to understand, you're trying to have it under some control, but there's something about it that you can't feel, you can't let it in, you judge it, you reject it. So you stay confused, you keep clarity out, even they might want clarity. Idealism. Well, ideally, we're in this place of joy and acceptance of others and ourselves, being visible, feeling seen, sharing our true self and expressing. And we can bring that experience deeply in. We can say yes to all that. We can accept and allow and embrace all of that. And I know that what comes to mind for me is you know, there's utopias that have been attempted. There's a sense of an ideal, you know, the, 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 the label you're an idealist is often, often a little bit derogatory, kind of like get your head out of the clouds. But what if that idealism was this idea of like projecting what should be, which is a bit of a should and expectation, maybe even a bit of arrogance coming from perhaps some obscurity and not willingness to look at life as it is and then take it in and then sort it out. 
And what if instead idealism had this potential to be a gift of being able to take in and, and receive and experience anything in the world that nothing had to make you shut down or withdraw? Because how have, have you ever withdrawn from the world? Like that's not, I don't approve of that. That's not okay. So I'm going to go into my own bubble. Right? Same pattern, but we're not actually embodying it. Or you fully embody the beauty, the magnificence of that catastrophe, of that good thing that happened, of that possibility. Something like that, something to explore. We'll come back and run through the obscurity and idealism and a little bit of the city as so we flow with that pattern after our mobility and our movement. So what is the mobility? We're gonna start the mobility by mimicking that messness, the meshness. And so they'll be a little bit crazy. The movement will be a lot more refined coming into the sponge, into the flexion of your spine. Let's start with movements of the arms where you make a bit of a windmill in front of you, elbow, bend your elbows. And you can even dip into it to create a little bit more momentum. So you've got two options. One is create circles, windmill circles in front of you. So you're creating elbow mobility, a little bit of wrist mobility, definitely shoulder internal and external rotation. And if that feels good, then you add some complexity, bend the knees. And if the, you wanna take the third stage, you really let go of control and let momentum carry this movement. Now I'm actually working with and caring for and tending for my shoulder. So I'm not gonna make this too big. You could make this bigger. My invitation is as you do this, you only stay within a bubble that feels solid and stable enough. A good, like you can be with it. The moment you start to create some pain, you can't really be with it anymore. So play with that range. We'll go for a few more seconds. See if there's anything in your movement pattern that really wants your attention. And then stop, let it go. Second mobility pattern with rotation for the spine. Start by rotating one side and rotate to the other. Once you've got a basic, real good feeling rotation, we can add a few layers. One is to add arms again. So we add the arms, swing the arms, swing the arms. That creates a bit more momentum, a little bit more forces for your spinal rotators to deal with. So make it small or make it a little bit bigger. Once you've got that, the last piece to add is to let it be led a little bit by your feet. So I start to throw or toss my body into rotation by inverting and everting the feet which rotates your femurs, which makes your pelvis rotate. And so you've got this platform for movement. Did you get that? It's a little, it's, it can be a little nuanced. So again, one version is you're sort of starting from the core and moving, moving with rotation or you're adding the arms or you're starting with the feet. So similar movement patterns, but they're sourced differently. And in this, you can run into obscurity. You can run into areas of your body that you, you're blind to. And they invite you to slow things down a little bit, play with it, bring more clarity internally. That's what we're doing. When we move from mesh to sponge, we're bringing more clarity internally. Take the last few seconds to be with your experience with this. and let go. I wanna share one little insight. You may be having your own insights with this, which is amazing. Put it in the comments. 
One insight I just had I want to share with you is so often we think of clarity, clarifying things as knowing what we should do. But clarity in this case is having an experience and being able to be with it. So you're bringing clarity to the situation by allowing it all to be here. And when things are obscure, like, oh my gosh, I'm completely blind to how my right foot is working. You slow things down enough, get the clarity. It doesn't tell you what you should do. It shows you what is true. And it's a little bit different. Kind of fun, huh? Our last movement pattern for mobility is going to be with the knees, the ankles, and the hips. And you'll, we're going to go a little slower with this because you'll need your balance. If you need extra balance, touch something for balance. The movement goes like this. You lift one foot up, you bring it across behind you, up towards your rear, out. So you are drawing a circle with your foot. You'll end up pointing your toes as you do it. And through this, you're getting a nice internal and external rotation through your pelvis and your femur. You're getting flexion and extension with your foot and your ankle. Your hamstrings get a nice contraction. The two modes here, one is slow and controlled and the other is a little bit looser because your hips are throwing the movement. Kind of like being on a swing. You push at the right time and it's really effortless to go higher and higher and higher. Switch legs. Make sure you're breathing. And find a way to add a little bit of hip sourced movement. This side is definitely more difficult for me. Even saying something like, oh, this one's more difficult for me. Notice that that can bring you clarity to the ideal of what's possible out of the obscurity of, uh, this is a little, this movement's a bit obscure internally here. And let it go. Well done. That's our mobility patterns. Are you noticing how we're bringing, we're bringing in some messiness and then adding more and more inner experience as you go? That's how we get it more advanced. So we're bringing the 11 hexagram as a way of doing exercise, which is a really cool thing to do because you can bring these themes into all movement patterns. Speaking of which, what's our movement pattern for today? It is a spinal roll down. We're gonna do this from the front, from the side, and in two other ways that'll add a bit more challenge. So what the movement is, is you start with your head, you tuck your chin, we're gonna roll down into forward flexion, into a forward fold. You can bend your knees, you can adjust any way that this feels right for you. Here we go. Head, torso, spine, pelvis, knees, and roll up. Two more times. Well done. Now we'll go laterally. Now this is gonna be much smaller uh, of a roll. You won't go all the way down. And it starts by taking your head to the side and then ribs and lower spine. And at some point you're just gonna to get to, you can't go any lower unless you bend your knee. So go ahead and bend your knee a little bit if that allows you to go a little lower and roll back up. Two more times on that side. Now relax. Close your eyes and feel the two sides of your body. One likely feels more obscure and one 
likely feels way more good, more ideal, more clear. Okay, open your eyes. Let's go to the other side. So the side you haven't done yet, head, arm, spine, knee. Make sure you can breathe and there's no pain, of course. Two more times. And once you're back vertical, close your eyes, feel the two sides of your body now. Excellent. The last direction is back. Now we don't have a lot of rolling to do here. So for the most part, it's gonna be a very light back bend. You're gonna feel the front of your body engage to hold you up and then you'll come right back up. It's not gonna be very far at all. Start with your head, roll back. And up you go. Two more times. One more time. And wraps. Now close your eyes. Feel the inside of your body. Did you get some more awareness about what you could do and where there might be some inner glitches or just more clarity about how your joints are moving? We're gonna take this to the floor into a kneeling position. You might need a blanket. That could be nice and helpful. If you don't need it, don't worry about it. But a blanket or a pillow could be helpful. We're gonna do the same four movements here. Ideally, I'll be facing you. The first movement starts by moving into child pose. Now you can have your hands out in front of you to support you. It looks like this. We'll do the sides and we'll do back. Let's go three times each, starting to the front. Roll forward. And up. And two times, two more times. And if you do not need your arms, don't use them. Now with your pelvis being more stable, you may have noticed that your head rolls down fine, but the lower spine might not have been so mobile. So that's something to play with as you take your time, as you keep bringing your attention internally, and you'll find that mobility. You might also need some external support with roll, rolling or balls or something along those lines. Next movement to the side. Again, you may use your arm, you might need it to support you. So start with the head, roll, use an arm if you need it. Where can it go? And come back up. If, it's, if some part of this is a stretch, gets too intense, you've gone to where you need to go. Try it again. Third time. Other side. Okay, rest. The last round is to the back. Now there might be a 
uh, a, a tendency to kick your hips up. So for the most part, you're just going to go back to where you can and then back up. If you want to use your hands for support, that's okay. You can do it, uh, but see where, where your core stability can take you. and rest. If you are on the wood floor, that'll be very different. You may be able to go further on a softer carpeted floor. Our last movement is going to be taking this concept and making it much more challenging on your back. So it's a core exercise, as they all are. Once you lay on your back, take your arms and your feet up You'll open up out and wide until you start to feel your spine undo its stability. So you want to stay strong here. Then bring it all back to center, elbows to knees, or maybe past. And you've got a very full crunch. Open everything out and wide. Bring it all back together and in. Three more times. Relax, do one more version of that, but it'll be the opposite way. We'll stay on your back. You're gonna reach the arms and legs out wide and then come up into a bridge. I'll demonstrate once, arms and feet wide, like a snow angel, and then feet and arms back, come into a bridge. Here we go, three times, everything wide, And bring it in and up. Roll up to sitting when you're done. Now in your new sitting position, feel out the space of the room. This is our mesh again. And then come narrow. Sponge again. Open your eyes, turn your attention out and wide. Bring everything in narrow. One more time, everything goes wide and up and out and engaging and then slightly disengaging, but engaging with your own experience. So let's do our final pass, come up to stand. Our final pass is to activate the shadow and the gift. So this is where you make experience some more emotion You've been setting the stage for transformation through this the entire experience, and the process will continue over the day as you have more synchronicity and you are sort of primed for these themes. Let's do one pass to iron out any particular wrinkles that have come up for you or are ready to come up. So obscurity. What in your life has been obscure? Where have you been struggling with or reacting to obscurity? Come forward into mesh, but don't really go there. Kind of screw it up a little bit. Freeze, hold it back. And go into sponge, but also don't really go there. Hold back from it. So you're going to fail in a way with this movement pattern. 
not really going there, and then not really going there. And let yourself be present to or generate what you're present to and the connections to where obscurity has been alive and challenging for you. See if there's an overreach. So now you're gonna go too far into the world. Kind of needy, over, over excited, too much. And then way too much, way too much into self, like an active withhold and withdraw. And now find a sweet balance, a sweet spot for you. What feels right intuitively and what feels right as you come in intuitively. How do they go together? As you do this three more times, iron out any wrinkles, any glitches you experience just by going slowly and softly through the movement. Once you've smoothed it out three times, let's activate and be curious about the gifts of idealism for you. What gifts of idealism are there for you to receive or share? What gifts of idealism are yours to receive, notice, and share. Let the practice go. Soften your elbows and your knees and your breath to relax into a neutral position. Eyes somewhat open, somewhat closed. So you're both present and then neither too far inward or too far outward. How's your body feel? What's your mind like right now? Start to rub the outside of your body and scratch the inside of your body. Rub and scratch, wake up your skin, come into the space as a new and fresh you. Thank you for participating in today's Epic Workout. Hope it helped you wake up Epic with the qualities of idealism in your life. I'm Alex Iglesia. I'll post a few more videos here you can play with and practice with. Have a great day. Have a great week. I always encourage you to practice these for a few days in a row and let the qualities and the embodiment seep in and guide you. Thanks for being epic.